The sun has symbolized the light, or dark a path to the light. One kind of story tells of a hero who sets out on a quest journey. The ancient Greeks told many stories of the hero quest. Heroes like Perseus, Jason, and Theseus made journeys from the commonplace world of the everyday into the uncommon world of the supernatural. With the help of the gods, they conquered the forces of darkness, evil lords, and monsters, and returned to the light, returned with wisdom and knowledge that ordained them to be the great leaders, guides on the path to the light. My journey will be to follow in the wake of the quest heroes. I hope to gain some wisdom and knowledge, guides to lead me on the path to the light. In Greece, it is still possible to experience the world of the quest heroes, to tramp the barren rock-ribbed hills and to cross the wine-colored seas. But no journey to experience the world of the quest hero is possible without passing through the world of the present. Walking the streets of Athens, you're assaulted by the exhaust fumes and the sound of traffic, and gifted by that first glimpse of the ancient past. Suddenly, between buses, there is the Acropolis floating above you. Climbing Philippou Hill, it's possible to rise above the din of the present and view the Parthenon free and regal. From here, Athens, I will travel out to the Cyclades Islands, to the islands of Seraphos, Sipnos, and Theta, to tell the quest stories of Perseus, Jason, and Theseus. Slowly, I turn my head and I look from the city towards the Aegean Sea my path to the light. Catching the ferry to Seraphos. I arrive an hour early. Already island people and summer tourists have gathered on the docks. Slowly, I maneuver my gear, mostly two packs carrying a folding kayak. I will use the kayak to paddle part of my journey. The load is heavy, nearly a hundred pounds, and difficult to move on and off the ferry. A constant reminder of the present on my journey to experience the world of the ancient quest heroes. On the ferry, there's time to relax to search the horizon for that first glimpse of Seraphos, the island setting for the telling of Perseus and the Gorgon Medusa. From the docks on Seraphos, I look up to the ancient fortress. Was it here that Perseus climbed up to that fortress? Slowly, I make my way over to the steps and I start the long climb. I wonder as I go, did Perseus climb these steps? And when I get to the top, there I stand and look out across the Aegean Sea, perhaps where Perseus stood as he planned his quest journey to find and to kill the Gorgon Medusa. The island of Seraphos, a rocky shore in the midst of the blue Aegean Sea. Some say that the rocks here look almost human. They say that the hero Perseus turned the humans on this island to stone. Once long ago, this island was ruled by an evil lord. And in his palace, there lived a young man by the name of Perseus. 
He was an outsider. His mother had been born on the mainland of Greece, and his father, some said, was the great god Zeus. Because he was an outsider, many times the other young men made fun of him. So it was one day the lord of Seraphos declared that he was going to marry, and he called for all of the young men to tell him what kind of presents they would bring for his wedding. One stood up and said, My lord, I will bring you gold from Africa. Another one stepped forward and said, My lord, I will do even better. I will bring you a sword with a jeweled handle. And a third jumped up and said, And my lord, I will bring to you a beautiful sable black horse. The lord of Seraphos looked over to Perseus and asked him what he might bring. And Perseus, because he was poor and an outsider, he could only think of one thing. He stood up and said, My lord, I will bring you the head of the Gorgon Medusa. Oh, when he said that, everyone laughed. Indeed, you could see they looked around at Perseus and laughed and turned and went on their way. Well, the wedding day came, and everyone brought their presents. But Perseus, no. He was not able to fulfill his deed. And everyone laughed at him, and the Lord of Seraphos came up and said, Perseus, here on our island there is no place for braggarts. Go and find the Gorgon Medusa. Kill it and bring that bloody head to me. And so Perseus left this island, and he set out on a quest to find the Gorgon Medusa and kill it. The story tells us that he traveled from island to island through the Aegean until he came to the island of Samos, and there the Olympian gods felt sorry for him. Athena came down, and she gave him a shield made of shiny copper to protect him. And Hermes gave him a sword, a sickle sword, to cut off the head of the monster. And then they told him where to find the dogskin cap of death that would make him invisible so the monster could not see him. And they told him where he would find the winged shoes that would help him fly through the air. And then, finally, where he would find the magic pouch to carry the monster. Well, Perseus went on, and he killed the Gorgon Medusa, and he brought the head back. And the story tells us when his, when his ship came into the harbor here in Seraphos, that he climbed off with the magic pouch in his hand. And the king, looking down the hill, saw him and laughed. And when he came up towards the palace, he called all of the young lords and ladies around him, and they stood there. And as Perseus came in, the Lord called out and said, Perseus, what have you for us? <laughs> the bloody head of a chicken. Perseus opened up the magic pouch, and he held up the head of the Gorgon Medusa with its blood-red eyes and its bulging purple tongue and its hair of withering snakes. And he showed it to the Lord, and the Lord and all of the lords and ladies of the island of Seraphos were turned to stone. So the story tells us, Perseus left the island, and he went back to his homeland of Argos, where his mother had come from, and there he became a great leader, a great king of the Mycenaean people. And the stories of Perseus go through all of the history of the Greek people. It is still possible to stand on a high point on Seraphos and look out across the rocky hills to imagine those faces turned to stone, to follow the line of a distant ridge and make out the silhouette of the evil lord turned to stone. Headed to Sifnos today, I will paddle the kayak. As I leave Seraphos, I imagine Perseus setting out on his quest journey, cutting a wake broad and blue across the water. I can almost see it there in front of me. Think about the journey of the hero, Perseus, traveling from island to island until the goddess Athena 
gives direction to his quest. There are times in life, times to set out alone on a path uncharted, a path that sometimes is dangerous, times when you rely on your own wit and the will of the gods to guide you along that less traveled path. I have 10 miles of open water to cross today. I think about Perseus. I think about the fear that he felt setting out to find the Gorgon Medusa. I know I fear. I fear the storm that could come up on this water today. The wake of Perseus was clear. No storm, an easy crossing. The harbor on Sifnos is full of fishing boats coming and going. I land my kayak to rest and look around. My mind has turned from the story of Perseus to the story of Jason. I think about the Argonauts and the Argo. I look at these fishermen. I go up to the taverna and look into the eyes of an old man. Is there the look of a hero there? I look around at the fishing boats. I see the shape and imagine the Argonauts sailing across the water. Standing here this evening along the east coast of Sifnos, it was along this coast that Jason and the Argonauts traveled on their return from finding the Golden Fleece. The story of Jason begins when, as a small child, in fact a baby, his father, who ruled in the kingdom in northern Greece, was dethroned by his brother. The new king threatened the life of the child Jason so that the parents sent him up into the mountains to live with the centaur called Chiron. There Jason was educated and he became a strong, healthy, powerful young man and he came down from the mountains and claimed his right to rule. The king, recognizing the danger, looked at Jason and said, Indeed, my son, you shall rule, but first you must make a quest Go out and find the golden fleece and bring it back to your homeland of Greece. Well, the king figured that Jason would not be able to do it. And so Jason gathered together young men of that part of Greece. They built a ship called the Argo, and calling themselves the Argonauts, they set out across that Aegean Sea. They sailed across the sea into the, the Black Sea and to the kingdom of Colchis, there, in the land of King Aetes, they found the Golden Fleece. Jason went to the king and asked for the fleece to be returned to Greece. Again, the king, playing for time, he looked at Jason and said, Indeed, my son, you may have the Golden Fleece, but first you must prove yourself. You must yoke the fire-breathing bulls plow the fields of Mars, plant the seeds, the dragon seeds that will rise up into an army and then slay them, all of them. Well, it was an impossible task. Jason would have ended his quest right there, except that the goddess Athena came to his side. And with Cupid shooting an arrow into the heart of the young princess Medea, the daughter of King Aetes, the young girl fell in love and she agreed to help Jason and the story tells us that Medea, having great power of the moon, for she was indeed the daughter of the moon goddess, she made a salve, a balm, to cover the body of Jason so that when he went to yoke the fire-breathing bulls, the fire did not burn him. And so he completed the task. He went back to the king, and of course the king didn't want to give him the golden fleece. He threatened Jason, and only with the help of Medea was Jason able to steal the golden fleece and escape from that land of Colchis. There is a whole set of long adventures that Jason follows on his way home. 
he marries the dark-skinned princess Medea, daughter of the moon goddess. He travels home, but when he gets home, when he's recognized for bringing back the golden fleece as a hero, he takes another woman as his wife, and he pushes Medea aside, for she is indeed from another culture, another way of life. Preparing to leave Sipnos, there is no graceful way to enter a kayak. More than one Greek fisherman has enjoyed a chuckle at my expense. Heading out of the harbor, I admire the fishing boats that I pass by again. The graceful lines, the colors they're painted. As I pass by the last line of fishing boats, my energies turn towards beating out a steady rhythm. I'm paddling towards Milos today. It's there I'll catch a ferry boat to the island of Thera, the place where I'll tell my last story of Theseus. There's more of a chop on the water today. Still, there's no danger. There's time to think as I paddle. I think back to Jason, and I think of his quest journey, that he traveled with the Argonauts, but the time came when he faced the fire-breathing bulls. Like Perseus, Jason faced them alone. The heroes always come to that point. Milos, time to pack up my folding kayak and carry it to the nearest paved street where I'll load it on the carrier. I'm catching the ferry today, headed towards the island of Thera to tell the last story, the story of Theseus. The ferry is a convenient way to cross distances that I would not feel safe crossing in my kayak, but it destroys the feeling that you're on that journey following in the wake of the quest heroes. High and dry, secure, I settle down, I put away the paddle and pick up the pen. Periodically, I glance about and take in the scene. But my mind has turned to that last story. The Mycenaean hero Theseus, who traveled to the Minoan island to do battle with the monster Minotaur. I can see theater there in the setting sun. Four thousand years ago, this island was the center of Minoan culture in the Cyclades. In about 1635 BC, a great volcano erupted. The top of the volcano collapsed into the sea, creating a vast caldera. Today, you can stand on the rim. You can look down 900 feet to the water below. You can look across the caldera 19 miles across to the other side. The hero, Theseus, came to this island to do battle with the Minoan monster Minotaur. The story is said at the time before the volcano erupted, a time when Minoan power reached across the Aegean Sea to Greece. Theseus came to the palace through the gate down the stairs to the dark entrance to the labyrinth to face the monster alone. There is no better showing of the conflict between the Mycenaean and Minoan people than in the story of Theseus. A long time ago, the Minoan people required of the Mycenaean people that they bring a sacrifice every year of seven young men and seven young women. They, to be taken down 
under the palace of the Minoan king Minos and sacrificed to the monster, part bull, part man, called Minotaur. Now, when the child Theseus is born, he is the illegitimate son of the king. The king tells the mother of the child that when the child is old enough to move a large stone and take a sword from underneath, he is to be sent to the palace. And so Theseus grows to be a strong young man. He moves the stone, takes up the sword, and he goes to his father, the king. Now, to prove his right to be the next ruler, he agrees to become one of the young men to be sacrificed, that he will go down and kill the monster Minotaur. And so he takes the sword of the king, hides it under his cloak, and with the other young men and women, they go down to the island kingdom. The night before they are to be sacrificed, he takes out the sword, and he goes down into the labyrinth, the passageways and doorways and rooms. He gets lost. He can't find his way to the monster, but help comes. Help comes in the form of Princess Ariadne. She shows him the way into the labyrinth, but she does more. She gives him a ball of twine to string out as he goes so that he'll follow it back and escape. So he kills the monster. He comes back, and there Ariadne is waiting with the other young men and women. They escape from the palace. They go down to the shore, find a boat, and they leave the island kingdom. They go to the island of Naxos, and there Ariadne is left. Theseus returns home, and there he becomes a great leader of his people, the first king of the city of Athens. The quest story of the ancient Greeks marks one of the many paths to the light. It is a path you travel alone, like Perseus. Sometimes, it's easy to follow, with golden fleece of Jason brightly shining the way. Sometimes it is a path that leads into the dark of night, into the unconscious world of monsters like the Minotaur. Our path to the light is never direct. At best, we cross it from time to time in our lives. And hopefully, we leave a small wake for those who follow after us. <laughs>